get up, seize the better day. Globalize Yourself Stereo. We are here at the Christopher Moller Gallery and we're speaking to the lady of the moment, Ms. Tony Kam. How are you doing, sis? Um, for just background info for people who may not be aware of your work, do you mind just giving us a short description in terms of what you're about? Like, you're in, it's from inspirations, from choice of medium, just like who are you? Uh, my name is Tony Gum. I am a young uh, student from Cape Town, South Africa. I'm studying film and I take self portraits as my content. And photography is generally my medium, but I've been exploring in painting on top of the photography as well. I explore the narratives of female bodies, mainly black female bodies, but I also explore identity within that. And just trying to make that a cohesive relationship in this very modern world we are living in as well. Yeah, because I see you integrate a lot of the, the contemporary feelings also with our own African feeling. So that's been a deliberate step that yeah. you've taken. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, our culture is very traditional and tradition is very rigid in its ways. So we need to be, make it flexible in order for it to survive. Sure. So if we don't want to make sure that our traditions and our cultures don't become extinct, we need to make them adapt to the very times that we are living in. So things such as having makeup, red lipstick as a mom or own is yeah. like very taboo, but why not? And incorporating things that are very modern within that, making it very flexible so that it's relatable to the modern times and it's uh, appealable to the young person as well because we, we find that things of tradition are not relatable and therefore we don't want to adhere to them anymore because we can't understand it. So we need to make sure that we can understand it. Yeah, because there's been a bit of a renaissance, I mean, especially for people living in Cape Town, there's like a black pride that's just come up mm -hmm. like almost instantly and you are one of the catalysts, you know, for that kind of a feeling aesthetically. No, really, I mean, because that's the kind of information you project. And also speaking about like the self-portrait thing, um, does Frida Kahlo play any kind of a role in your life, inspirationally, or what are your feelings in those kind of, that kind of lineage of artists? Absolutely, she was almost the first woman of color who I became aware of in the art world, who took self-portraits yes. and who was very liberal in her stance in portraying herself. She had this unibrow, she was a different kind of beauty. So her understanding of the self and the standards, standards of beauty was like very inspiring for me because she didn't conform to the context of the times where it had to be blonde and blue eyes and all of those things, but she encompassed her own understanding of beauty and she evolved that and that's pretty revolutionary. And I was very inspired by that. I still am. And I am following her footsteps, if I may say that, yeah. That's beautiful. It's a great lineage to follow. And it's also so great to see like young black women, African black women, having that kind of consciousness and following those kind of paths because it's a very unusual, road less traveled kind of a vibe. And even in today's terms, like being a young black woman in the art world, yeah. super male dominated, super European male dominated, how are you navigating that space and what are your feelings on the space? I'm navigating it as I should be. Um, this is a space where it should be open for every Tom, Dick, Willie, Silly, Mally and Harry and Nom Gomboti if they do sure. that space. But the thing is, it's it's up to you as an individual of how you want to navigate and determine and decipher what kind of space it is. I am very well aware that it's very white and very male, but that's not the... Premise. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's not the premise. Thank you for the words. Um, but I'm moving there because I feel that I should be there and I can relate to the space that I'm in and it's the work that I'm doing is accepted in that space. Whether or not it's accepted, I'm doing something <clears throat> excuse me, bigger than myself. And sure, I'm sure. trying to share a message and a narrative that will educate my fellow brothers and sisters. And so these are the platforms that I need to be on. Sure. So I'll make sure that I'll push. Yes. So regardless of whatever hinder mm. or barrier that is there, I'll make sure that we push it aside. But re regardless of that, I've been received well. Absolutely. So <laughs> I we can all vouch for that. It's, it's, it's been good. Um, it's a good space to be in. 
So with regards to traveling exhibitions, like what kind of travel, because Globalize Yourself is like a travel-based kind of experience through audio. You're doing the same thing through the visual like language. So where, which, which places have you been to to display your work? Where, like what kind of interesting stories do you have in that space? I've been to New York. That was my first international travel with, for the art. I went to Miami. Miami, I don't know if you're gonna, I went to Miami. Miami is uh, quite a, a glamorized, very uh, hyper-centralized space where it's like bling bling everything, but it's very nice. Like at Art Basel. Ah uh, yes, we were there around the surrounding um, art fairs there. So it was. I thought it was more homier than New York. New York felt very familiar, with, especially with the people. So, but Miami, the vibrance and the love, which was like in abundance. So I was there for the Miami puzzle. And then I went to Italy for Venice Biennale. But that was, yeah. But this was, that was generally for talking. And um, yeah, that's. That's so um, you, you kind of touched on the fact that you're a student. Now, how does that tie in to like your professional responsibilities versus your student <laughs> responsibilities? How are you managing? We have to survive here. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's not difficult. I mean, there are people who are doing like way crazier things than myself. People who are working nine to fives and they are still at school and they have to go to work after school and they have to do more things. So it's about like just understanding the capability of a human that you can do more and you just have to put your mind to it. Uh, I think that I'm blessed in the aspect that both of the roles that I play within the work and the school, they, they are aligned. I do stills and I, at school I'm doing motion picture. So there is a relationship between the two and I'm hoping to merge them eventually because I have a bigger picture in mind. It's not, it's not, it's not hard. Because cool. I'm thinking that it's not hard, but it is hard. It's physically draining, <laughs> but I, I don't want to yeah, think about the it. The attitude determines yeah. the output. So it's, it's, that's kind of beautiful. And do you have any, like, you're studying film, so obviously we're going to be experiencing moving pictures from you. Um, do you have anything, maybe just slight things you want to share in terms of, like, maybe what kind of space you want to be in? Like, what kind of, how would you wish to express yourself in that kind of moving picture world? I would love to get to a point where I remove myself from the camera. Sure. And I start documenting other women, and start taking portraits of them, and start of like um, documenting their life and their stories, because we even the film world is very male dominated. So we need to have female directors, female camera women. So that's the space that I want to navigate in, so that I can we can see a difference in between the two worlds versus the man who takes a picture of a woman versus the man who takes a video of a woman versus the woman who takes a video of a woman. So we need to be able to see that and make it more comfortable for the female specimens who are in that space, those subjects, for them to open up and for them to share their very crucial stories. So I want to be in that space and be behind the camera. And yeah. That's beautiful. Um, in closing, do you have any kind of, I mean, as a young person, so you're speaking directly to other young people for once. It's actually great. <laughs> you know, do you have young people that are doing things so that it doesn't sound like the oldies are like yeah. kind of detect, dictating to the younger people? Like, what kind of message do you have? Because people um, sometimes misunderstand the process and they misunderstand like how you kind of create relevance for yourself and for your work. Like, what kind of, not necessarily words of wisdom, but what, what could you share in that regard in terms of how do you process yourself through whatever medium that you're using, whether you're a beat dude or a visual dude or an animation dude, like from where now, what you've experienced, what could you share? All I have to say is that you need to, it's as cliche as it may sound, you need to believe in yourself because ultimately, for me, in order for me to actually invest or even listen to your idea or your dreams, I need to understand that you're confident in what you're telling me. If you don't have that confidence, I won't really care about it. So even if it's the most craziest thing or the most mundane thing, if you have the confidence and you understand what your craft is, then no one can tell you otherwise. You can be open to advice, of course. You need to do that. Um, I know that some young black people will have a lot of politics from home, starting at home. 
I, I can relate. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. But all I can advise is that respect your elders, yes, mm -hmm. but also respect your passions, respect your dreams, because at the end of the day, you're the one who's going to go home to s and sleep with a heavy heart. Do what you need to do, but also balance the two. You don't need to defy anyone. Just know how to master two skills at once, because that will make you that will make you different from the rest. So, do what you can while you still can, and while it's still free, and while it's still while you're still capable and able. Don't give up, and don't wait until the last minute and then you wished and you wondered. Even though we have more opportunities now. I don't think that we have most of the um, resources available to everyone, Absolutely. but you can do things. You can reach and you can approach. Come through, knock at people's doors. You know that ambition. Exactly. Well. Technology has made it easier where you can cut out the middleman and start putting your work out there for, pe for the world to see, not even for people, for the world to see. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Siswam. Very wise <laughs> words from you. Hi, this is Tony Coombe and you're listening to Globalize Yourself Studio. Peace. Peace.